Good morning, good afternoon or good evening, depending on where and when you are watching this newscast. Welcome to This is the Week That Was in Virtualization Cloud and EUC. Coming to you from the virtualization practice, my name is Tom Howarth and this is episode one of what is hopefully going to be a weekly video news roundup. This week the conference season kicked in in full string with offerings from both Cisco and Nutanix. Cisco took over San Diego with their live event and Nutanix invaded Miami with their inaugural .next conference. But what happened there? In San Diego, Cisco announced, while on the face of it, nothing really. No new product sets or features. To be honest, it was more like a Cisco dead conference. In fact, the biggest thing that seemed to come from San Diego was the fact that Steven Tyler, the lead singer of Aerosmith, was walking the floor and mingling with the punters. To be fair, with the turmoil going on at Cisco at the moment, this was not totally unexpected. Major changes at the top, a departing CEO, a retiring CEO and a departing CTO, coupled with the fact that they are a company that has really just woken up to the fact they are no longer the only choice in the market. They're still struggling to come to terms with that fact and trying to understand this brave new world. As John Chambers, the departing CEO, stated, we must disrupt or be disrupted. And Cisco are currently being disrupted. SDN is something that was really missed. Their ACI strategy is to put more expensive tin into the network, complicating the stack. They're a company on the cusp. Hopefully they don't go the way that appears to be happening at NetApp, but more to that story later. Cisco need to gamble big and quickly. Can they do it? I think so. If you read my piece titled Sauron, I mean Cisco, just book by Piston Cloud, you can see a positive move into a service-like company. Tin, although an important part of their portfolio, will start to take a back seat as their cloud strategy really starts to coalesce into a coherent product. This will take time, but the recent purchase of Piston Cloud and MetaCloud and TailF, when properly blended, will make a potent mix. I have to be one of the first to admit that I may have been wrong about this. Cisco do appear to have a cogent strategy. <clears throat> Next, we move on to Miami and the .NET conference. This was Usurper's Nutanix's first attempt at a conference, and to all intents and purposes, it seemed to go with a bang. The Nutanix conference was a complete difference to Cisco's, a yin to a yang. This was full of the social media outputs that we have come to expect from this new media savvy company. They announced the arrival of the community edition of their product, taking a leaf out of that other SDS disruptors, Nexenter's book. This is a good move on Nutanix's part. There is a significant price gain in gaining access to Nutanix blocks, circa a minimum of 20,000 US. Now the software is free. As to what limitations Nutanix have placed on the software, to date I'm unsure, but once I get my hands on it to play, I will update you all. That said, that was not the biggest announcement of the conference. This was the announcement that the phony war with VMware is now over. They're going straight for the fatted calf. Nutanix has released Acropolis, their take on the KVM hypervisor, into their platform. Nutanix, like VMware, has its evangelists. However, the main evangelists at Nutanix are all ex-VMware junkies, and a large proportion of the VCX employees have just been minted as MVPs, sorry, MPXs, Nutanix's pre premier architect level certification. And there's nothing as fervent as a former addict. This is going to be a vicious corporate battle that will be fought on the corporate boardrooms in social media sites like Twitter. However, with the release of the CE edition, Nutanix has started to tap into that core set of bloggers, tinkerers and techies who play to learn. This has until now been VMware's domain. If Nutanix CE is as fully featured with Acropolis and Prism, VMware be beware. A 60-day trial will no longer cut the mustard. Over the last couple of weeks, there have been some high-profile movers. As already alluded to, Padmasari Warrior, the successful and highly respected CTO at Cisco, is leaving to pastures new in June. Has she resigned or was she pushed as part of Chuck Robbins's The Incoming CEO's restructure? Well, perhaps we'll never know. But I would punt pushed as she is the other department's departures, mainly the vast majority of the old exec team, including Chief Operating Officer Gary Moore, Cisco President Bob Lloyd, SVP Ed Zard, Overbeek, 
and Cisco's chief globalization officer, Win Alfink, have all been swept aside as the incoming CEO moves quickly to replace Old Guard with his new people. As already mentioned, Cisco's in turmoil at the moment, and it'll be interesting to see what the end state of this venerable tech giant is. In another shock piece of news, Tom Gorgans has fallen on his sword and resigned as CEO of NetApp. Although, to be fair, this is not too unexpected, and I thought he should have gone sooner, which again points to a non-consensual exit for the CEO. NetApp have appointed George Curran as interim CEO. This is not a position I would want to give my worst enemy at the moment. Gorgans took over the company at the top of his game. It was beating EMC in deals left, right and centre, and was rightly seen as an innovator. He's left it in a terrible position. The last couple of years have seen key personnel leave to new startups who have rightly taken the crown of innovator from them. They completely ma missed the flash revolution, and when they finally released an AFA, its performance was actually worse than that of its spinning disc brethren. This new ONTAP has not been eagerly re received, and the upgrade process is fought with difficulties. I don't like reading the writing on the wall at NetApp. That said, they are still winning large deals, although not as many as they did, so there could be a possibility of a file say sale here. However, I just cannot see an obvious purchaser. Cisco, who have long been mentioned as a potential, well, they're more happy partnering with storage vendors after their failed whiptail acquisition. It doesn't fit with their culture. One possible purchaser could possibly be HP. Store, however, not for the technology inherent with NetApp, it would be more for their customer base, as this would safely move them into number two position on sales. And they would then slowly but surely start migrating those customers to their three par and store virtual products. A final shock exit is that Twitter's CEO has quit. Again, he's denying he was pushed out, but the evidence again seems to suggest otherwise. I think this one can be struck up to an activist investors. One of the downsides of going public is that those pesky investors want value back for their invested dollars, and Twitter has just not been delivering. Wall Street is a high maintenance partner, and Costolo failed to keep her happy. What is very t telling is that Twitter's shares rose 7% after the leadership change was announced. In other Wall Street news, it seems Citrix is under cost from activist investors, Alliant Management Group. They own 7.1% of the company. They have written an open letter to Citrix where they stated that the Citrix board is inefficient, lacks focus, and further proposed a new Citrix that included a free focus on core products and spinning off divestiture of GoTo and Netscaler. On the whole, I agree with them. Citrix are a mess. They have an overly complex business model, so complex that I've personally wondered exactly what that model is. Those of us who remember the GoTo purchase in 2003 will remember scratching their heads trying to figure out what it exactly had to do with their core products. Yes, it's a great product, but it's a distraction for the board. Again with Netscaler, fantastic product. But as Elliot stated, something should be done with Netscaler, possibly selling it. Netscaler is an excellent business, and it's ADC, technology, and industry leader. However, we believe Citrix has over-relied on cross-virtualization cell, resulting in significant under-penetration in non-virtualization use cases within the telco vertical. Again, I cannot agree more. However, for a further and more in-depth view of this, I suggest you read Simon Bamfit's article on the virtualization practice. The loss of senior management to direct competitors has less dis disruption, uncertainty. That said, do I think a sit refocused Citrix could win again? Possibly. But the response to the, that letter is not exactly encouraging in a press release issued last week. They responded with, Citrix has always maintained an ongoing dialogue with our shareholders and we welcome their input. We will review Elliot's suggestion and respond as we do with all shareholders engaged with us. The Citrix board and management team continually evaluate ideas to drive shareholder value and are committed to acting in the best interest of all our shareholders. So that's an icy no icebergs and the Titanic response if ever I have read one. So let's move on to the news from our sponsors. There have been two acquisitions. Firstly, Bruce Stripe, whose map 
helps map and monitor and troubleshoot distributed applications across heterogeneous operating systems, has been acquired by Microsoft. This is a canny buy for Microsoft, as it is commonly used by customers to extend the value of Microsoft System Center by adding application-aware infrastructure performance monitoring. We're sad to leave them, see them leave as a sponsor, but wish them well in the next phase of their continuing journey with Microsoft. The second acquisition was that of VirtuStream by EMC. They bring to the EMC portfolio a managed cloud and so services capability regardless of whether it is on or off premises. It is EMC's intention to incorporate VirtuStream into the Federated Enterprise Pro Hybrid Cloud solution. The addition of VirtuStream will enable the customers to move their entire application portfolio into a cloud environment and they'll also be brought into the Federation as its sixth member, along with EMC, VMware, RSA, Pivotal and VCE. Again, we wish the team the best in this the next stage of their company's development. So, that is what happened this week and last. If you have any stories that you think would be interesting, send an email to news at virtualizationpractice.com. Thank you for listening and see you all next week. <laughs>